Today, I'm with the 2020 Long Range Model S. I want to find out what all the fuss is about. Let's go have a look. Stepping into the brand new Model S, the 2020 Model S, uh, it just feels premium. It doesn't feel like a dated version of the Model 3. It feels like a premium version of the Model 3. And that's the same for the outside as well. If you was subject to range anxiety or you did long, long commutes every single day, then Tesla have you covered with this car, the Model S Long Range. So in a real world situation, a lot of motorway driving, it can do well over 300 miles, which to me is amazing. So who is this targeted to? Well, it's targeted to the businessman. The guy who need, might need an extra space on the weekend for the kids. Because at the end of the day, the long range Model 3 will do the same job. It's targeted those who want a little bit more luxury, a little bit more premium over the Model 3. And I think it ticks all those boxes. But this is just so much more pulled together. It's so much better. The interior is clean. It's refreshing interior. It doesn't feel old or dated. And that's mainly down to the material they've used. They've used a different kind of lever. It's a vegan lever. This Model S has all the features that you need in terms of full self-driving. It has the brand new system and can do full self-driving according to Tesla. It's just a regulations thing. So I did try full self-driving on the way down to London and it was a fantastic system. But in my opinion, in the UK, it's just not quite there yet. The car on the outside is absolutely gorgeous and we have this deep red paint job which in my opinion is tesla's best color we've all seen the model s before and i think in my opinion it is due a refresh and that's not to say that the car is looking old or dated or anything but we've seen this face for a long time but at this point i'd love to see something a bit more refreshing maybe slightly more aggressive from the model s but where the model s really comes into its own in terms of looks at night this thing really does come into its own and looks a lot more aggressive on the road. So this car is absolutely fantastic. 300, and, 300 to 350 miles, amazing performance, not to 60 in around four seconds. Full self-driving, it looks great, it looks amazing. It's got great road presence, the, dry, the handling, the drive's perfect. What are the downfalls, what are the shortfalls of the Model S? Well, one of the biggest shortfalls is the size of it, which for some people is a positive, but at five meters long, just navigating around this car park's a bit of a faff. Luckily, there's no one here today, so I can take nice wide circles, but if I wasn't able to take nice wide circles, I'd probably scuff the rims on these curbs, as I'm guessing quite a few Model S owners do. When it comes to handling a car in tight, confined spaces, I'm not the most confident, especially when this isn't my car. Tesla Birmingham have gave me this car as a loaner vehicle, and that's how I'm able to review it today. Um, so they are not my rims to be scuffed. See, I'm, this, it, I'm having to, so now I, there was an Audi there, couldn't hit the Audi. So, you know, it's not, it being big is a benefit in terms of practicality of the boot space, the leg room. But in terms of getting it around these, some of these UK streets and tight streets and stuff like that, it's a bit of a faff. Right, let me go pay for my car parking ticket. I, I bought parking just so I could do those shots on top of the roof, yes. That is how sad I am. Luckily, when you're parking it, there's a lot of driver's aids. So you can see how far you have before you're gonna hit the wall in front or the car in front. Um, it'll give you a nice little ding if you are gonna hit anything. But with all that being said, it's still just big and clunky and it makes it quite difficult to drive around in the UK. I'm fuming. Nine quid that parking cost me. Nine quid. Nine quid, he says in his Tesla long range, more or less. 
I thought it was going to be like a couple quid. Guys, please, please go subscribe to the channel. Ooh, nine quid. Bloody hell, we're not in London. Nine quid. I am. I'm insulted. Please share the video, guys. <laughs> let's uh, let's get some views. Nine quid. Ooh, that hurt me in my feels. I forgot where I was now. So it's a lot smoother on the road. Um, the suspension's a lot better than the last Model S I drove. The suspension's a lot better than the Model 3, if I, ha I have to be honest. Whereas before I didn't notice a difference, now I definitely can notice a difference. There's some amazing features, like the air suspension, uh, adjustable air suspension, which means you can change the ride height of the car with a click of a button. And what's amazing about that is the car remembers where you change it. So if you go, if you, like me, I, I drive up a road that's got loads of road bumps on it, I'll raise the ride height for that particular road. And the car, after a couple of times, remembers that that's what you do when you get to that location. So it uses the car's location to set the ride height and it adjusts it accordingly. Which to me, is such a simple thing for Tesla to have implemented, but it just works so flawlessly and it's amazing. Obviously, this isn't the fastest Tesla Model S they do. There's the Model S performance which does a 0 to 60 in around 2.3 seconds which is kind of crazy but that doesn't mean that the long range model s is no slouch in fact it's actually a really really quick car it will do 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds and people have recorded faster so you're pretty much faster than everyone else on the road so is the performance model worth it well you know, you get a few extras with the performance model. It looks a bit sportier, but if you pick a spec like what we've got here, you could save a few thousand pounds, get extra range, and also keep some performance at the 0 to 60 of 3.7 seconds. I, I've been with the car now for about a week, and I've really started to fall in love with the Model S. I never thought I could because there was just something about it that felt so dated to me. It just didn't feel like a car I could really enjoy. But after spending this last week with the brand new Tesla Model S, I've realized that Tesla have made a lot of improvements. They have been working on the Model S. It's not the same model. It's not the same car that I drove a few months ago. It's just not the same car. For me, I'm definitely gonna start looking at getting a brand new Model S. One of the biggest things for me about the new Model S that I love is the tech. What felt so lacking in the old Model S's in comparison to the Model 3 is here. It's here in the new shape Model S. You get all those things. You get the entertainment package, you get Netflix, you get all the games. And that just makes it so much more better. It's so much more refined. The problem is with, with Teslas is they are extremely techy cars. So when you go into a Model 3 and then step into an old Model S, you do feel like you're going back in time. What premiums do you get with the Model S? So you get nice features like a heated steering wheel, heated rear seats, heated front seats, which you do get in the Model 3 if you pay extra for them. You get this lovely wood finish you get this premium kind of suede le i think it's faux suede but suede going off you get a better center console with nice cup holders and popping out cup holders for your rear passengers the seats hug you just a little bit better you get a couple extra options on the seats to raise the headrest for a little bit more back support than you would in the model 3. you get poppy hat outdoor handles you get an automatic boot. You get the heads up display, which in my opinion you don't need, but it's nice. You get the adaptive air suspension. You get much more vehicle controls than you do with the Model 3. And you get that premium quality feel and look that you would expect from an executive vehicle like the Model S. There's so many more options that you can play with and you can touch and that you can set up that personalizes the car to you 
which makes a huge difference as well in comparison to the Model 3. Obviously, one of the biggest things we get different with the Model S over the Model 3 is the size of it. There is a lot more space. In fact, the boot space is almost twice as much and the front is almost as twice as much as well. Inside the cabin, you actually won't notice that much difference. Some people think that the Model S has a lot more legroom, but it's simply not true. And it's the same with the headroom. In fact, the dimensions for the Model S and the Model 3 in terms of legroom and headroom for passengers and for drivers is almost exactly the same. The only difference between the Model S and the Model 3 that's substantial enough to talk about is the width of the Model 3, which actually gives your rear passengers quite a big difference in space. It means that if you have got a clunky baby seat, that there's enough space for two adults and a baby seat. Whereas in the Model 3, as you probably know if you've, if you've seen it before, you'd be struggling a little bit with that width. In terms of length and height, they're almost the same. That doesn't mean by any means that the Model S is small inside. It just means that Model S and Model 3 are both kind of big inside. And obviously that's with it being an EV. Those features that I once criticized, like the steering wheel, like the dashboard, like the center console and the armrest, those things that I criticized in the old Model S haven't really changed that much in this Model S, but they look so much better this time around. It just feels well pulled together. This suede doesn't feel so dated. These sun visors are a little bit more pulled together. In fact, taking these flaps from the Model 3. The doors actually work this time. The, the inside of the door actually works. The armrests feel nice and more refined. It, in fact, works so much better than the old Model S that I was used to. And I genuinely think that has a lot to do with the materials used. The vegan leather or the fake leather feels that much more modern. It feels new. Shiny leather, in my opinion, feels kind of dated. It just does. The real wood works really well. It's really beautiful. The production quality of this car is top notch. It really is top notch and it works so well because it's tied together so well. In this car we have the one piece of glass as the roof so no sunroof as an option with this one and if I was choosing a Model S this is what I would go for. I think there's issues with the, with the sunroof and also that sunroof breaks up this beautiful sheet of glass which in my opinion adds to the car. One thing to note for rear passengers is there's no armrest in the back, unlike the Model 3. And I know I refer back to the Model 3, but that's my benchmark for cars, the Model 3. So yeah, the fact that there's no armrests for the, for the rear passenger in the center, in the center for, for them, for me is a little bit of a, is a loose situation. Although you do have the door inserts as a, an armrest, an outer armrest, which you know might make up for it for some people. Let's have a look into the computer system. So all the things that you would expect come as standard, sentry mode, uh, full self driving, the entertainment package, all the entertainment package and all the entertainment features. There is one thing I would note about the entertainment and because the screen is portrait, it means that when you're actually watching Netflix, you get a smaller screen than you would in the Model 3, which is noticeable in my opinion. That's one criticism I would have for the Model S is I'm still not a huge fan of the large post portrait screen. Although it's fantastic when using it as a vehicle, when you decide to step into it as entertainment, it's lacking in comparison to the Model 3. If I've been walking weird on camera all day, I should have explained this. If I've been walking weird on camera and like making noises trying to get into the car, I've got a really bad back. I think I've trapped a nerve or something. The other day I was doing deadlifts and then I played basketball with the boys and oh man, I'm literally, I'm literally dying out here, like it's so bad. So it's fantastic to get the full experience of all the entertainment systems on this Model S. And if I was to buy a Model S, I would do a, re if I bought a used one, I would retrofit with the hardware three and the new, the new screen and all the entertainment package and all that sort of stuff. I would get that done for sure. It's, it, for me, 
that's something I need. So if you are thinking about buying a used Model S, remember you can always upgrade the system and get that entertainment system. And if you've got full self-driving as an option, then you could get the hardware three full self-driving. So buying a used Model S isn't the end game, but you do have to get a Model S, I think it's after the 2017 model, uh, because it needs to have at least, I think, hardware two. I'd have to check that to be sure. So that was the 2020 long range Tesla Model S. In my opinion, this is probably my favorite vehicle that Tesla do at the moment. It doesn't mean I think it's their best vehicle. In, in my opinion, I think their best vehicle is either the standard range plus model three or the performance model three. But in, this is probably my favorite Tesla. The fact that it's got 300 plus miles of range means that range anxiety is not an issue, which it never was in the first place. But if you was planning to do London all the time, then this is a fantastic vehicle. It has made me fall in love with the Model S again. Something that I didn't have before was a passion or a love for the Model S because what I'd experienced wasn't as good as the Model 3. This is up there. This is a premium version of the Model 3. That is what the Model S is supposed to be. Is it worth twice the price of a long range Model 3? That's, that's the question you need to answer. If you need the space, then the answer is maybe. If you want a premium feel, then the answer is maybe. If you want all the attention that the Model S brings, then the answer is yes, because it does get you a lot of attention. That's one thing to note. People recognize this car even more than the Model 3. It's just sportier, it looks good, it's a nice looking car. Is it worth twice as much as the Long Range Model 3? For me, it's probably a no. But if you were in the market to buy a luxury vehicle, more of an executive vehicle, then the answer is obviously yes, you have the budget to do so. But yeah, that's just my opinion. I have absolutely fallen in love with the Model S again. I'm really interested in buying a used Model S. It'd have to be a new shape. And like I said, I'd love to do the upgrade on it. So hopefully that's something I can bring to you guys soon. Like I've been saying, I'm, I'm really fighting between a Model X and a Model S. I'm still not there yet. I don't know which one I wanna buy. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. As always, if you're thinking about buying a Tesla Model S or a Model 3 after watching this video and you found this information useful, please go to the link in the description. It will get you a thousand free supercharging miles. It will get me a thousand free supercharging miles and it does help support the channel. And shout out to everyone who's been using it. I really do appreciate it, it's absolutely crazy. I've got plenty more content coming with this Model S. As, because I've got this Model S, I'm using it as much as possible. With all that being said, guys, thanks for watching. You have been wonderful, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.